the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Just bless him in one minute. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I sincerely want to appreciate everyone for making it. This is our last service for the year. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Let's um, make some progress tonight. We're going to pray and um, just thank God as we wrap up the year. He has been very faithful. Praise the Lord. this mystery called thanksgiving this mystery called thanksgiving psalm 92 please just want to charge our hearts so that we will thank him for his goodness he has truly been faithful and we honor him for those who are worshiping with us for the first time you're welcome those following online god bless you psalm 92 i read verse 1 to 3. it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and to sing praises unto thy name o most high verse 2 to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery upon the harp with a solemn sound lord give us understanding in the name of jesus we have taught here again and again that spiritual growth please listen one of the indices as we have taught to measure spiritual growth god has taught us here again that there are only two scriptural indices to measure whether or not a man or a people are growing spiritually number one is your degree of conformity experientially to the image of the christ your degree of conformity to the image of the christ Number two is your comprehension of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. These two things must happen in your life for you to be said to be growing spiritually. If for any reason at any point in your Christian experience you are not conforming to the fullness of the image of the Christ, you are not growing. And even if you are conforming to the fullness of the image of the Christ, but you do not have access to illumination, the walking knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom, your Christian experience will be barren and frustrated, and it will still sabotage the fullness of all that Christ died for. So on one hand, we must contend through intimacy, encounters with his word, to rise to a point where our lives become an undoubtable reflection of the reality of who Christ is. And then on the other hand, we must have access to illumination, light, and understanding. It says the entrance of thy word giveth light, then it gives understanding unto the simple. And one of the mysteries that we have come to understand that control so many things so many results in the kingdom is a mystery that the bible identifies as thanksgiving 
now let me tell you something in your spiritual journey you should be able to tabulate the principles of the kingdom that through the ministry of the holy spirit you have had access to versus the results they were designed to produce that way your christian experience becomes predictable so when you talk about wealth and prosperity you should be able to define the principle that governs it health and longevity the principle that governs it deliverance and breakthrough the principle that governs it are we together now influence and increase the principle that governs it if you cannot match the outcomes you desire versus the kingdom principles that are responsible for delivering them your christian life will be barren because you will largely be guessing you see our ignorance in the body of christ is not ignorance of what we want we already know what we want but the mysteries to be engaged that deliver the results we desire we do we either do not know them or we do not understand their operation are we together now knowing them like i've always taught here is like having the ingredients for food if you have the ingredients for fried rice you have done well but that's not equal to fried rice you must understand the combination one mistake can make fried rice become something else one mistake are we together yeah. that's how it is so you must work with god to find out what ingredients are required for the outcome remember i gave an analogy one time i, I can't remember when um, if I want to buy, if I want to make yam and egg sauce, I may be wrong, but I think that rice is not needed in that combination. Is that true? So if I am on my way to the market and you sell rice for me, rice is good, but it's not needed as far as what I want to produce is concerned now there are many useful informations in the kingdom but you have to find out which ones are responsible for the formation of what you desire so that that certain lights are available does not mean they are necessarily needed for this aspect of your spiritual journey when a believer gets born again there are certain realities that are true and consistent with god's character but they are not part of the ingredients required to lay the foundation for his spiritual work are we together now so if someone just gets born again i'm not going to be teaching him on the principles for of, for wealth and prosperity it's unnecessary it's a wrong foundation it's like using zinc for foundation zinc is important for a building but there is a season when zinc is needed when the house is already built then you will need zinc are we getting it now so it is important that as we approach the word of god we stay with the holy spirit to define for us the ingredients required for every season of our growth he is the only one who has in his hands the blueprint of the mysteries required per time per growth you cannot guess what you think you need it's the same arrogance that a patient would demonstrate seeing a doctor when you come before a doctor you don't come and say doctor i think i need panadol no 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 no. you may not even have headache so you listen are we together there are times you feel healthy but the doctor will tell you you need a drip it's up to you to trust the wisdom and the sacrifice of the doctor brothers and sisters this is one of the excellencies of working with the spirit he minimizes wastage in your life so you don't invest your life doing many spiritual things that are not profitable they may be spiritual but are they profitable as defined by the season you are in he says the men of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what they ought to do let the Holy Spirit be the one to unveil the curriculum of your spiritual development it is costly to guess it is costly to copy you must work with him to define the blueprint part time so there are seasons in your life where he will switch his emphasis to your finances 
you may feel you are getting carnal he will never talk to you about spiritual growth again because according to his desire for you the formation of the spiritual house he's raising necessitates that you now know the principles of wealth so even if you are fasting he will still lead you back to the principles of finances and then there are times even if i'm teaching on finances in koinonia his personalized dealings with you is helping you conform towards the character of the christ so after you benefit from my teaching when you go back with him he would fold that script and keep it to be reviewed when that season is open in your life and you will continue your dealing on character with him this is how men grow spiritually but most christians don't respect the leadership of the spirit we think because a truth is spiritual it is applicable now no not every truth is needed at every time the holy spirit must prioritize truth like a spiritual house then you will find out if you follow him i guarantee you you will never miss out on any area there may be seasons where you think you have not known certain things yet just walk with him because by the time you get the basics he will now say this was a simple issue that's why i did not emphasize it in your growth if not we will major on the minors and minor on the majors academically speaking there are different courses and we add credit units to them according to their relevance with respect to the degree you want to obtain there are courses that are one credit unit you can study them in three days there are courses that are six credit unit, three credit unit. That's how it is in the spirit. Not every truth has equal value. They are all true, but they do not have equal value. As far as the, the, the requirement for your destiny is concerned. Please, I'd like you before we continue to pray in one minute and say, Holy Spirit, I embrace your leadership. It, it's, it's not just important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There are so many believers filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say, the Lord is my colleague. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. A sheep does not have a system of defense. It's only defense. It's his alignment to the voice of the shepherd. A sheep does not have horns. It cannot fight. His protection is absolutely dependent on the wisdom of the shepherd. So he says, like a sheep, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of these mysteries, and I've shared it many times, I would share it again, is the mystery called Thanksgiving. There is... A revelation about thanksgiving that many believers do not understand in the body of Christ and so we have lost cheap battles we have given ourselves prey to situations and circumstances that truthfully speaking without any effort on our own would have established cheap victories may someone get this revelation today in the name of Jesus Christ thanksgiving is one of the mysteries that we see being practiced in the bible again and again that every time a people came to express their gratitude as individuals and as a corporate entity there was such a dramatic response that went beyond the object of their thanksgiving they thank god for certain things and god moved far beyond what they were thanking him for we see this even in the life of jesus the apostle of our faith Many times in scripture, we saw him engage this mystery and it produced dramatic results. So I want to share with us very quickly, why should I give thanks? Why should I incorporate this mystery as part of the principles for establishing the victory of Christ Jesus in my life? Why thanksgiving? Number one, very quickly, please. The Bible tells us that it is a good thing to give thanks psalms 92 from verse 1 to 3 tells us it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above so if thanksgiving is a good thing then it means thanksgiving is consistent with the character of god and worth practicing 
and worth living by the first reason why you must give thanks is that it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord it is godly to be thankful write it down it is godly to be thankful it is spiritual to be thankful it's a good thing it is godly it is spiritual to be thankful number two first thessalonians 5 verse 18 the bible tells us there that it is the will of god for us to give thanks first thessalonians 5 verse 18 it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of god now listen the situation is not the will of god your response is what is the will of god it says in everything regardless of the outcome it should not affect your response give thanks for this the thanksgiving is the will of god so regardless of what is around me regardless of the outcome it should never affect my understanding and my approach of being ever thankful this is the will of god in christ concerning you that in all things you give thanks the second reason why we must engage the mystery of thanksgiving is that it is the will of god and we know that the only way the kingdom comes is when his will is being done matthew 6 verse 10 right thy kingdom come only when and if your will is being done so there is a dimension of the kingdom that needs to find expression in my life and that dimension is at the mercy of me fulfilling the will of god as far as thanksgiving is concerned meaning if i do not give thanks i rob god of the opportunity of demonstrating a dimension of the reality of his kingdom it is the will of god to give thanks number three thanksgiving according to john chapter 6 from verse 6 to 13 help us media is the secret to multiplication thanksgiving is the seed for more whenever you want more of anything in your life the key is not complaining the key is not grumbling the key is that you engage the mystery of thanksgiving multiplication and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what to do i love jesus he inspires me i love it every time the bible says he knew what to do it's terrible to not know what to do jesus knew what to do philip answered him 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little we're reading to 13 8 one of the disciples andrew simon peter's brother said unto him there is a lad here that had five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they what are they lord i have this little talent what is it called with respect to what i need for my life lord i want to build a house and all i have is ten thousand naira in my account what is ten thousand with respect to seven million or ten million that i need and jesus engages a mystery verse 10 and jesus said make the men sit down now there was so much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand eleven and jesus took the loaves and when he had what he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fish as much as they would 12 when they were filled he said to his disciples gather up the fragments that remain that nothing may be lost 13 therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remain over and above unto them that had eaten thanksgiving that's all jesus did he took the bread he took the loaves lifted it to heaven and said father thank you because wherever there is thanksgiving the grace that multiplies will always answer whenever there is genuine thanks those who know this have changed their lives overnight you see 
when you study the old testament many times people were punished for murmuring one of the things that brought the anger of god upon the nation of israel was murmuring and complaining is it only moses you will speak to this and that and that and that and they went through catastrophic events the bible says jesus lifted the baskets and he gave thanks the african culture has trained our minds to not be thankful are we together someone gives you one one thousand naira every day and then you now say sir are you not knowing that i'm growing now you started giving me one one thousand before i married are you aware that my wife is pregnant with twins we always want more by placing demands through complaint by placing demands through ingratitude but in the kingdom the system of the kingdom is such that every time what you have is not enough the way you let god know is to say thank you thank you is the code in the spirit that says lord i need more you don't say give me more you say lord i thank you for the one you gave me and then he knows that it, you have authorized yourself to move to the next level of supply can someone say thank you jesus say it with all your heart thank you jesus don't say lord except you are not lord i must finish this year well i must and i must finish no it must be my turn to chop no lord thank you for me to be witnessing the 16th day of december i give you thanks and god will say that's right that is the code for finishing the year that's the code for qualifying for 2017 thanksgiving demons don't give thanks they never give thanks not one is not once in scripture there are some things demons cannot do they cannot give thanks it's not in the character of satan to give thanks it's anti-satan to be thankful you frustrate satan when you give thanks not only is it a sign of contentment it's a mystery that acknowledges that there is a god above you and that that god is worthy of thanks and that he has more than you have experienced and that it is within his power to extend his benevolence to your life say it again thank you jesus the key to multiplication jeremiah 30 verse 9 jeremiah chapter 30 verse 9 jeremiah chapter 30 am i 19 i'm sorry not 9 jeremiah 30 verse 19 i like us to read together it's projected if your eyes can get to the projector screen let's read together one to read and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and as a result what will happen i will who will do the multiplication i will multiply them and they shall not be few i will also glorify them and they shall not be small just because there is a voice of thanksgiving to say lord i have just one child now but i give you thanks not to say lord will i die like that with only girls in my house some of those culture driven antichrist mentality lord i give you thanks there are many women who are barren but you have been faithful i celebrate you for what you have done and the bible says i will multiply them the code in the spirit is thanksgiving don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you when you get to a door you don't cry when you get to a door you don't weep when you get to a door you use a key a giant door can be at the mercy of a little key you can put in your pocket but if that key is not there that door will not open forever the key for more could it be that there are people seated here brothers and sisters who god is ready to give surprises in the next 15 days but the the next dimension of god's grace is at the mercy he says out of them shall proceed thanksgiving not complaining you see why many nations never rise our economic theories are designed to complain we shout and say everything blame who is not doing what blame this a mother is blaming father father blaming mother children blaming everybody and while they are doing that god is looking 
with all the love in his heart is limited by our lack of understanding the principles of the kingdom lord at my age i'm earning forty thousand. and is that a testimony your name is being mocked and god says my god someone else that forty thousand is his prayer point is what he put as a benchmark the secret to multiplication is thanksgiving hallelujah number number what number four the fourth reason why we give thanks according to luke 17 please 13 to 19 is that it is also the secret to wholeness and perfection thanksgiving is the secret to wholeness and perfection write this down it is the last step in exercising your faith in your faith equation the last step is thanksgiving haven't engaged the word haven't spoken haven't obeyed the last step hmm. a man of God said this and I quote he said when you are trying to call God the last digit of his phone number is Thanksgiving like you press 080 are we together when you get to the last digit the very last digit is Thanksgiving And they lifted up their voices and said, Master, have mercy on us, the ten lepers, 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Look at me. They were cleansed, but not whole. To be cleansed means the leprosy left, but their hands were still showing. You could see leprosy on them. Are we together now? If you saw them you tested them in the hospital it will show that there was no more leprosy but their fingers were still stunted their physical expression still showed that they once suffered leprosy and the Bible says and one of them see how scarce the spirit of Thanksgiving is only one out of every ten and one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a with a whisper quietly and say i don't want people to know the lesson uh -uh. the bible says with a loud voice glorified god next verse and fell down on his face at his feet doing what giving him thanks and he was an unqualified person a samaritan a samaritan not a jew next verse and jesus answering said were they not ten cleansed but where are the nine next verse there are not found that return to give thanks save this stranger 19 and he said unto him hallelujah arise go thy way you have fulfilled the last step of the faith equation and now your faith has made you whole your faith has made you whole are we together yeah. so you had the fibroid they operated the fibroid and had to remove the womb but you are alive yes you are alive but there's no more child again medically speaking is that true the Bible says the woman returned and said, Lord, although they caught my womb and I'm alive, thank you. Take it to the next dimension. I give you praise. And then as she's giving praise and rejoicing, all of a sudden, the God who made womb before makes another one. And I'm standing here only because you made you made a way 
When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made Listen, there are many things in our lives that are not yet perfected and the key is although we have seen the miracle you came and you testified yes but many of us have stopped God from finishing you know how you build a house and God has a paint has a wallpaper has a finishing and he said Lord I am so grateful I mean I'm so happy that I'm inside and God says do you know if I show you the picture of this house, I'm, I'm still yet to paint and finish. How many of you know, those who do architecture and construction, that the things you use to finish the house can be more expensive than the whole building? So there is more. Compared to what you've seen, there is a bigger side to the miracle. You only saw a small piece of the pie. But we complain and grumble and compare ourselves. Were there not nine that returned? He says, go thy way. Your faith has perfected you. Your faith has perfected you. Philippians chapter 4, please. From verse 6 to 7. Still on the fourth reason. Philippians chapter 4. 6 and 7. Let's hurry up, please. 6 and 7 he says be careful the word be careful there doesn't mean be careless is the word anxiety be anxious for nothing he says but in everything listen listen to how believers pray by prayer and supplication perfected with thanksgiving let your request there is a spiritual formula for getting your request known. It says when you bring the supplication and the prayer, you give thanks. Let your request be known unto God. Then it says the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, shall keep garrison your minds through Christ Jesus. So when you pray, haven't made supplications. You know, let me tell you something. Please look at me. The, the principles of the kingdom sometimes we look so childish that in our matured world our world of excessive adulthood and intelligence we are unable to just submit ourselves to the childlike principles of the word of God that's why Jesus said you have to become like one of these little ones if you really want to inherit the kingdom if you want to walk in the experience of the kingdom you must lay this excessive um um, this sense of adulthood we are not children here the Bible gives a very simple formula that when you make your requests add it with thanksgiving hallelujah mm. the fifth reason why thanksgiving number five It is the secret to supernatural victories in the spirit. The secret to supernatural victories. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. I can tell you this from the authority of God's word. This ministry and in my own life. One of the cheapest ways to command victories over the powers and the forces of darkness is to properly and scripturally engage the mystery of thanksgiving very very powerful truth second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 second chronicles 2 22 to 24 and then we'll look at psalm 92 1 to 15 but we'll just look at 1 and 3 10 and 15 second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 Sorry, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22 to 24. Media, are you with us? 2 Chronicles 20. Thank you, 22 to 24. This was Jehoshaphat. Listen, the victory that was commanded. Listen, 
And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord said what? Ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, at Mount Seir, which were come against Judah and they were smitten. Look what happened. 23. Do you know while this was happening, the children of Israel were not seeing it. They were at the other side of the mountain giving thanks and saying you are good and your mercy endures forever. And then at the other side, God was commanding great victories. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped destroy Imagine with me how the last two died. Everyone helped destroy another. As if it was a charm. You just fight your... Three of us plan to go and destroy Pastor Alpha. We are tired of what God is doing in his life. And we summon whatever arsenals we have. And instead of him wasting his time on profitless things, he engages thanksgiving. And while he is doing that, something is orchestrated. Makes me kill her. And then I turn and we discuss who dies first. She kills me and kills herself. Now I hope you know that these guys were warriors. They were not children who were hungry. They were trained soldiers. You know how long it took for them to mobilize themselves and say let's come together as a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken and destroy judah the city of praise and while all of that were happening they listened to a prophet of god and he said look set the singers and the priest is that how you go to fight you put men of war and then women and then children that's how you fight war but he says this kind reminds me of psalm 149 it says let the high praise of god be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands right to bind their kings with the fetters of iron and to execute vengeance upon their nobles he said to to um, paraphrase it now to execute upon them the written judgment how the enemy will be defeated is none of your business your part is to engage obediently it says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete hallelujah this was perfectly adumbrated Ejimi, in the story of esther and a wicked man called mordecai are we together now yeah and uh, haman i'm sorry Haman was plotting to annihilate the Jews and he leveraged on his influence with the king and while all of that conspiracy were going on news got to to Esther and instead of her to go and murmur and say am I your wife or not say am I, you are my wife say will they kill my people just that's how many women will complain Vashti did it she was out it will happen to anybody because we are all women in the spirit Vashti did it. She was shown the way out. But look, look her. You know why she excelled? She listened to Mordecai. The same way the church prospers if we listen to the Holy Spirit. Mordecai was playing the position. He started advising her right from scratch. Referred her to Haggai. That's how she got to the palace. She listened to Mordecai. At a point in time, she even wanted to be rebellious. But she came back to her senses. And then she went and met him and said, Oh king, I want to flaunt your glory. I, I want to let the people see how excellent you are. King said, go ahead. And when she gathered all the people, the king looked at her, paraphrased and said, keep doing this thing every time. Do it again. You see, kings were stupid twice in scripture. One, when they took wine. The other one, during their birthdays. There was a kind of dance that kings received that they did not seek advice kings were wise people they used divination to make judgments so when a king vetoes all the astrologers a lady danced her way to remove the head of a prophet a prophet 
but a dance removed his head. They were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. Someone here is giving God thanks and you will go back and see a rearrangement. That's not how you left things. That's not how you left things. You left bills. You left sickness. You left all kinds of things. But while you were engaging the mystery, somebody is being forced to wake up from his sleep and saying, how long will you keep disobeying me? You must bless my daughter. Here's her account number. See it in a dream. 002571, you are dancing here. I know some of you don't believe these things happen. You see, there's a way you disobey God so much that you don't even know that certain possibilities exist. When Samuel prophesied to Saul, he said, on your way going, it will coincide with two men, all of them holding loaves. They will salute you and give you as if they don't know what to do with it. That's what happens when the light of God shines upon you. Men will bless you for reasons they cannot explain. That's how Pharaoh blessed the nation of Israel. It was like a charm. That's why when they left, he said, what did I do? Something was at work. Released through thanksgiving. When they conquered the nation of Israel and drowned them, Miriam raised up a song. I will sing unto the Lord, she said, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider have been thrown into the sea. God said you are ready for the next level when they murmured they were in trouble are we together now very quickly let me give us three biblical ways to show gratitude three biblical ways to show gratitude Number one, we'll look at a few scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22, the A part, and then Psalm 96 verse 3. The first way to show gratitude is through testimonies. Testimonies. Testimonies are a way to demonstrate thanksgiving and gratitude. Read with me please, the A part. One to go. I will declare thy name unto my brethren i will declare it i won't be silent god has been good to me i won't be silent and say let them not say i have I'm, I'm bragging too much it's not a lie he was good to me he is good to me and i still want him to continue to be so i engage thanksgiving you know sometimes we allow people's cynical attitude make us guilty to sincerely express the goodness of god how many people are afraid to say what God has done in their lives because there are all kinds of people with wicked hearts the moment you say I was sitting down someone just brought the car keys of a house you say, where is the house show us the picture of the, all these liars who just come and speak you know people are the, the system of Babylon has trained people to hate the joy of others they may be sincere people you just watch someone buy a suit that he couldn't have afforded before and he say be careful lo. it's only God that knows what everybody is why must you be cynical testimonies are powerful provided they are communicated with a sincere heart when your motive is to come and waste time and make noise then that does not glorify God but when God has done good things in your life brothers and sisters let me tell you you perfect every happening and the dealing of God in your life through testimonies Psalm 96 verse 3 quickly please Psalm 96 verse 3 it says declare his glory among the hidden his wonders among all people declare it declare it declare it when you stand to testify it's not pride you're not bragging provided you don't tell lies and you don't behave childish you come before the people of God look look what God has done for me I didn't expect that I'll be eating right now but look at what God has done look at the faithfulness of God 
and the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy meaning it has capacity to impart faith and reproduce itself so when someone is listening to you and seeing let your light so shine before men that they may see and then through it give your father glory the moment you hear the testimony of someone cancer HIV whatever and then healed supernaturally by the power of God you now sit down see how you have been insulting God simply because you have a breast lung and you say no 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 but it, it, I mean if someone was healed of A B C D all at once my God is faithful and you lift up their spirit testimonies are powerful brothers and sisters there are many people who receive so much from God but refuse when you were going through the challenges you told everybody including those who could not help you now that god brought a miracle he said no I, um, my nature is not to say anything I'm, I'm a quiet person by nature god does not just want you to keep quiet over what he has done how will they attest to the fact that he is faithful are we together now number two the second way to show thanksgiving is to sing praises write it don't wish praises don't recite praises the bible tells us how to praise god he said sing praises turn your testimonies into songs turn your testimonies into melodies still psalm 22 verse 22 the b part and then we'll look at Psalm 28 verse 7. Please quickly, Psalm 22 verse 22, the B part. It says, in the midst of the congregation, I will. It didn't say I will praise you in my room alone. I will praise you. I will sing. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Psalm 28 verse 7. The Lord is my strength and shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. He said, therefore my heart greatly rejoiced and with, what is the tool of praise? With my, not just the song of worship team. There are times your gratitude will compose a song. With my song will I praise him. Psalm 105 verse 2. Let me give you a few scriptures to really help you there. Psalm 105 verse 2. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of his wondrous words. He says sing unto him. Bless his name. Sing unto him. Let him know you are so grateful you have converted your gratitude to a song. Two more scriptures. I found this and I think it was quite interesting. First Chronicles 16 verse 9. First Chronicles 16 verse 9. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Sing it one more time. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. It says, sing unto him. Sing psalms, talk of his wondrous works. Did I? We've read that already. Psalm 69. 69 verse 30. Psalm 69 verse 30. Psalm 69 verse 30. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. So you sing praises unto him. Number three, 
The third scriptural way you express thanks and gratitude is through your seed, through your giving, through your seed, through your giving. Psalms 116 verse 17. Through your seed, your giving, sacrificial quality heartfelt giving, not something you yourself cannot give yourself. I will offer unto thee, there is something called a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I will call upon your name a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Amos chapter 4. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. Verse 5. Amos chapter 4 and verse 5. It says, and offer what? A sacrifice of thanksgiving with living. And proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this like at you, O ye children of Israel. It's not possible for us to get CEV. I wish we could get any other version. A particular version put it in an excellent way. But it says, offer. This one you are not singing offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and then it says publish a free will it says i also oh, no 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 verse you're making a mistake verse five media well it's the same thing right just just it's okay just just leave it that's all right offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving do you know let me tell you something according to scripture now even in the new testament men prayed and they sacrificed two things that went hand in hand prayer and giving remember cornelius acts chapter 10 god told two reasons why he attracted the presence of God. Number one, your giving. Number two, your prayers. The, the, the scripture we read before this says how that I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, then I will call upon your name. Giving and prayer go hand in hand. But simply because we have listened to people who have insulted every man of God, written rubbish, junk journalism, publish every kind of nonsense to think that men of God are out to just manipulate people and here and there I know that you will find excesses here and there but it still does not negate the fact that it's a principle there is a dimension of your speaking that only your seed can speak that you celebrate God and you thank him for his faithfulness and bring out a seed if it's not sacrificial, it's not a seed of thanksgiving. The Bible calls it a sacrifice of thanksgiving. I want to challenge everyone here. As God grants you grace before you finish this year, if not today, find a sacrifice of thanksgiving. In fact, frankly speaking, that is the standard way it should be done. You shouldn't just talk about it and say, wow, this is nice. I love you too much to not tell you the truth. Do you know, while I was studying this, already, I gave my own sacrifice before I came. And the interesting thing about me and God is, I don't choose what I like. You may not have faith for that now, but may God grant you grace to grow to a level where you allow God to decide everything, including your giving. He decided your wife, he decided your job, why not your money? <laughs> you see, the part you have not given God is where you will not get the best of him. Hallelujah. Something dangerous happened to me this evening. Because while I was talking with the Lord and I said, oh, I just felt it in my heart. I said, no, 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 no. The people of God, it's important to challenge them on that wise. And I just remembered, every true shepherd must lead the way. And I said, okay, Lord, so what would you have me give? Very interesting, eh, Jimmy. God did not tell me what to give. He told me what should be left in my account. This is like, this is like maybe 30 minutes before I came here. 
and off it went oh no come on it all belongs to you oh, oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh. and so i gave it with all joy thanksgiving two minutes accident will scatter your life they will use that money to bury you and fight over the change <laughs> are we together you leave it for a foolish person who has no discernment and wisdom that was the frustration of solomon he said i've worked so hard to build this now i would die and give it to an irresponsible son who didn't go through what i went through he said this is vanity I'm cheated I'm still rich but I feel cheated because I mean how can I just give somebody who has no sense let me digress a bit and challenge you make him Lord of everything make him Lord of everything it is foolish to surrender part and leave part God does not need your money he doesn't need your fame anything given to god is well taken care of god is a good manager our fears and insecurities which are a sign through faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice it takes faith to give that you trust god so through your seed let me give us one more the fourth way that we give thanks is by continually seeking him and promoting his interest. First Chronicles 16 verse 11. By continually seeking him. By seeking him is not like he's, he's missing. Seeking him is simply a, a figurative expression to communicate your desire for the depth of more of him. I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more Lord, I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more 16 verse what did I give you 11 not 12 seek the Lord and his strength it says seek his face continually not when the money now comes you know it's amazing how people seek God when they are trusting him for certain things we've dealt with this it has become an anthem that when your pursuit for God is tied to certain results when you get the result I'm seeking God because I want to twist his hand and force him to give me this lady to marry the day you marry her you set a goal and you achieved it that goal has been achieved there is no impetus to seek God again I'm seeking God because I want to be a millionaire right the moment you have a million naira or a million dollars or whatever that's the end of it you shouldn't seek him again why seek God when you have all the cars and houses why seek God when you have eight nine ten zeros in your account foolish people seek God for things foolish people not bad people foolish people seek God for things never seek God just for things Lord I am seeking you because if you are God you must give me this pure water no 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 no, no. don't try to twist his hand your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things it says for the gentiles run after these things and your father knows that you have need of these things but you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness you see if you seek the kingdom of god the word righteousness there it's not just talking about righteous standing it means god god's modus operandi his principles you seek his kingdom his influence and you also seek to understand his principle in doing it you will find the keys that will cause other things to be added hallelujah don't seek god for things 
seek him and seek to promote his interest that's why we are called ambassadors a true ambassador is committed to promoting the interest of the nation he represents an ambassador does not have an agenda of his own if at any point an ambassador is found having an agenda of his own he's a rebel he's a rebel the bible calls us ambassadors god has an intention there is something he's doing and we must plunge our entire lives to see his purposes fulfilled brothers and sisters listen to me it is not only important that we bless God and thank him it is important that we praise him with understanding it is important that we thank him with understanding when you thank God in ignorance the power is released through knowledge not the motions knowledge the revelation that backs what you are doing so you can be dancing around and not know why you are dancing and sweat by his mercies and out of his love he will bless you but in his system everything that is not done with understanding is the same as not doing it so if I give without understanding, it's the same as not giving. If I sing without understanding, it's the same as not singing. Don't just do things. Have the understanding that makes them powerful. Just like many people say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. It's not just speaking with understanding. Hallelujah. God has been so faithful in my life in this ministry in our lives we will not only be disobedient we will be wicked if we are not lavish in expressing our gratitude to him not just by dancing but that you take your entire heart and put it on a tray and lift it up to him and say lord you deserve everything i was just thinking of the faithfulness and the mercies of god we have traveled this year like none other the deliverances of the lord you hear the testimony that the lady came to share their truck do you know do you know how easy it is to die when god is not protecting you you can have a boil on your neck and die because the devil takes advantage of anything that gives him entrance people just had headache my head my head the wife goes to soak towel and comes out and meets a dead man thanksgiving we trivialize a lot of things people crying recession things are not going well there are people i think it was eddie one time we we're going to kaduna and he told me that um, some neighbors or so were begging for rice i'm not saying begging you for money they come with a cup and say give me two or three or four cups my wife and my children are about dying but then the mercies of god some of us quarter to it finishing something happens again that was not even tied to your tithing because some of us have not been faithful at all yet his mercies you know when you know the mercies of god you will really love him you will really really love him brothers and sisters in the next two or three minutes we are going to rise up and i want us to so lavishly worship him and thank him just two or three minutes and then i'll just speak over our lives if we miss out i know you have danced you have jumped around but right now i want you to just reflect in one minute on the faithfulness the goodness the kindness It's grace, your grace, Lord, I'm nothing without you, grace, your grace shines on me, your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your 
Sujana nena ke Sujana Sujana Godia nena ke Godia Godia Sujana nena ke Sujana Sujana Godia nena ke Godia Godia Sujana nena ke Sujana Godia nena ke Sujana nena ke Sujana Sujana Godia nena ke Godia Godia Sujana nena ke Sujana Sujana Godia nena ke Godia Godia Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode, ya Yesu na gode. Na gode, 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 na gode. Sujada nena ke, Sujada, Sujada, Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Sujada nena ke, Sujada, Sujada, Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia.
voice and begin to count your blessings. Lord, I was in front of that car. It would have killed me. I know it was not my faith, but your mercies. I watch you raise school fees for me in a way and manner. I saw that cross waved. Are you ready to worship him? Count your blessings, Koinonia, for the job you gave me. You changed my financial status this year. You opened my eyes and gave me understanding. I got born again this year. I got filled with the Holy Ghost this year. I understood the word of God this year. For multiplied grace. For uncommon influence. Pray. Tell him thank you. My father and my mother came back this year. They were at the verge of the force. But by your grace you stepped in. Worship him. Jesus, I say thank you. I never had any plane crash. No car accident. You gave me a new house this year. You gave me accurate knowledge. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Over my life, I watch the power of witchcraft broken. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to him. Come on, worship him, Koinonia. Victory belongs to Jesus. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Hey, oh. For the next two minutes, we are going to thank God as a family. We have seen the hand of God in mysterious ways this year. Miracles upon miracles changed lives. Men and women here bodily entered into dimensions in the spirit. Lift your voice and thank God for koinonia, for victory, for victory, for influence, for grace. Ha! Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, time will fail me.
to begin to tell you the things that God has done for us as a ministry influence favor access multiplication of grace when the media department was submitting a progress report preparing for the dinner one of the most touching testimonies is that as far as the moment any teaching is uploaded online an average of 1 million downloads within the first 24 hours no publicity no sir if I by the finger of God brothers and sisters we have seen answered prayers it was here you dropped the request yet the answer was waiting for you at home and you saw miracles people transformed by the hand of God I don't know about you but brothers and sisters help me thank this God in one minute and say Lord thank you epochal teachings that have come the mysteries of the kingdom building men and women some of you have seen your lives changed you've seen the anointing at work in your life mighty dimensions of grace thank you Jesus hallelujah one last prayer point i want you to thank god for your family i know some of them are not here on their behalf if you ever lie to me and say you did not see his hand this year you will not be fair you know what january was you know what december is right now lift your voice and say father thank you thank you thank you thank you shaka tabarata thank you thank you thank you mighty God mighty God thank you for our families many God born again this year many God filled with the Holy Spirit many found direction for their lives the word you Turns things around. Help me. Fans to thank him for the balance of the year into 2017 because you must get there. Don't ask, don't ask. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I thank you. Your promises are yea and amen. And I say thank you. No devil will stop my eyes from seeing. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise in advance that sickness will not go with me to 2017 I give you praise are you giving him praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you have given God praise I want to release something upon your life that you will take back home for when you give him praise you provoke a dimension of his glory you provoke a dimension of his grace I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart you have given thanks it's time for you to carry the anointing and the grace that will help you finish so that you don't go home crying again you go as an ambassador listen listen on Tuesday I had a great time in the prayer department inside outside any of the overflows I want you to be very sensitive now I want to pray for you the prayer department I had a great time with them and one of the things I shared with them listen is that the level of grace and unction you carry defines your possibilities in this kingdom not just the name of Jesus listen please our possibilities are defined by the level and the kind of unction that is at work in our lives are we together now mm. hundred dollars and hundred naira are all the same denominations but not the same value are you getting what I'm saying now every challenge you face that is lower than the level of the grace and unction you carry will be solved but every challenge you face that is higher than the level of grace and unction you carry will not be solved scripturally you will see that it should be solved but the dynamics of bringing the result to your life is that you must upgrade through understanding and impartation to a level that will afford God to release the possibilities at the level that you desire are we together now our lives are limited by the level of grace and unction that we carry from January to December God has been faithful over our lives some of you now are going home there are all kinds of yokes of darkness waiting to mock God like they did last year but you are going back with an unction so that what could not happen last year I want you to believe what I'm telling you our possibilities there are some of you if you do not introduce the anointing you are about to receive in your family they will not celebrate Christmas well because there are orchestrations of hell but for your presence and so you appear there and introduce a mystery that disarms principalities and powers your understanding and the anointing are the keys you need to command victory your understanding and the anointing not just the anointing not just your understanding they work together like your left and right hand so an anointed life with a wrong paradigm will limit its operation a healthy paradigm with no anointing will stimulate the the expectation of possibilities that may never happen you need both a renewed mind which you have received all through this year please I'd like you to pray one minute with your heart open and say Lord I desire this grace let let it come upon my life and make the difference the difference I have given you praise please pray hallelujah hallelujah I will speak over everyone but let me just pray for the heads of department just the heads of departments and the maybe the ministers please quickly quickly just in one minute I feel like doing that for them and then I'll just pray for everybody at grace There is an unction from the Holy One. They have walked in measures of grace. Join them, Pastor Alpha. Femi, join them. Promise, join them. Father, 
you have honored this house you have brought grace upon us lord i pray that the leaders will carry strange levels of grace please believe what is coming on you don't trivialize it i will pray for you strange grace grace strange grace From your spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ strange grace strange grace by the power of the Holy Ghost fire strange grace 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 for the next level in the name of Jesus Christ fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace for the next level lift your hands please everyone lift your hands in the name of Jesus the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing smoke and it's coming on people the Lord is saying this is a prophetic grace Lord I release my hands right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now take it I place it upon your spirit receive that grace prophetic grace privy to insights in the spirit privy to insights in the spirit receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now i want to pray a prayer that everyone should release there is a grace that releases the creative power of the word of god not the revelatory power revelation informs creation makes if i tell you god said this will happen listen i want you to believe me i'm about to release something on your life that when you speak there is a kind of unction that can leave your words and create realities not inform people it will happen i stand in the name of jesus under this apostolic and prophetic anointing father inside and outside let men be baptized into this realm of reality receive that baptism right now creative dimensions creative dimensions inside outside receive it in the name of jesus 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 it's not just speaking there is a level of grace i want to pray for you god has shown me favor this year in my life in a way and a dimension that i can only give him glory father i pray that esther anointing that causes men to arise mysteriously in the name of jesus take that anointing to your homes take it in your life Papa, take it, take it. you can't stand it it must come upon you it will land upon your spirit man that esther anointing that esther anointing help them please please help that lady someone in the name of jesus aaron that anointing is coming on your wife an angel of the lord is pouring that oil upon your wife is a new season of favor a strange season of favor a strange season of favor a strange season of favor i hear my spirit restoration 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 the mantle is falling restoration by the power of the holy ghost restoration inside and outside i don't care what has left you help that mother please restoration of gifts restoration of dimensions restoration of levels in the spirit you once carried that have left you i release that grace on you right now strange restoration
a level of wisdom that you have never seen in your life illumination by the spirit to know what to do part time wisdom manifesting as divine direction ah, yeah, 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 yeah. divine strategies receive it right now in the name of Jesus know what to do I command your spirit to know what to do by the illumination of the word of God I put the word of God upon your spirit and I command access to light access to illumination every prophetic word that came upon your life in January and is yet to find expression in the name of the Lord God of heavens between now and 31st December let there be a performance a strange performance a strange performance a strange performance I pray for you the mystery of exemption that when men say there is a casting down there is an anointing that can exempt men I decree and declare that as that unction comes upon you you are strangely and evidently exempted strangely and evidently exempted in the name of Jesus I'm praying anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death the spirit that snatches the lives of men 28 29 30 yet the men die some even December 31st by 6 o'clock I command in the name of Jesus I forbid the earth from taking the body of anyone anyone marked for death here I extend your life by the word of the Lord I extend your life in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you listen some of us are going to the village now listen we are not in darkness as to the wickedness that is in villages the Spirit of God is doing something in this lady there is restoration that God is bringing there are people who are going to villages and there are wicked spirits enforced by the presence of men don't say it does not exist that snatches the way people go peacefully and return back divorced I pray for you whoever plays with your life I stand upon this altar I command the earth to open up and swallow them I say it again any man that makes any enchantment any invocation over you or your loved ones the earth will open and swallow them I was talking with a lady today we are rounding up who shared something very touching with me where she comes from there are certain rules and regulations there are some trees you don't touch you touch those trees by mistake you pay for it with barrenness or something mysterious so if you mistakenly just see orange or guava and you decide to pluck it and eat it that will be the end of it she said the ground the soil where their compound is their house that you can stand there if anybody stands on it or something and makes invocation except somebody anointed intervenes it must happen and then some I think a relative to them now went and stood there and made a pronouncement over the family whether there was something about building house and he said whoever builds that house that as he's reaching sink level let the person die I said they should go to the village and tell that man that they met someone called Joshua Selman searched through witchcraft 
they call your name they die like chickens I tell you they call your name they die like chickens listen don't let men threaten you with nonsense value what you have a man born of a woman it exists and it will work until your light bails you out but let me tell you something I say it again I don't know who has said what Job said he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men I decree and declare and I reverse any pronouncement made over any family in the name of Jesus Christ <laughs> hallelujah a lady told me something the other day that there is I think a clan or a family where some people come from whether they are cursed or something they, they cannot marry they can't do I, I think she was telling me something like that for doing nothing once you are born into that family they say a curse is on you and truthfully speaking if someone marries you or whatever it is that's the end of it now what did you do wrong did you decide your bet somebody did something somewhere and now you are a victim of a stupid statement everybody shout no way shout it no way listen some of you have allowed that lie that's why you don't prosper hold on please let me just talk for one minute this thing is boiling my spirit there are people who will not break certain barriers because someone has indoctrinated you into believing that there is a covenant of poverty and truthfully the devil has leverage on your thinking and you are seeing it happen and it's true there are families like that you do everything it will not work but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I prophesy over your life I don't care how long it has been break that barrier in the name of Jesus break that barrier in the name of Jesus listen don't think i'm just talking i understand witchcraft i've told you my grandmother was an idol worshiper she used to brew beer for masquerades so don't think that they gave back to me inside plane i was just flying and enjoying myself i've told you how demons witches and wizards used to oppress me as a man of god preaching with anointing come on now Whatever the devil has taken from you, I don't care when, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says if you catch a thief, he must return tenfold. I command supernatural restoration now. This year will not end till you are restored. Fully restored. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for you. The grace that distinguishes men is called the oil of gladness. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Not for the purpose of competition, but to set a standard that is established in righteousness. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the grace that has distinguished this ministry, may that grace start walking and speaking in your life from today you will travel and not even a nail the, the your your tire not even a nail the tire will not match even a nail in the name of jesus christ for those of you who are afraid the spirit of fear the Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Fear is a dangerous spirit. If there is any voice speaking to anyone here, you will not make it next year. I reply that voice as representing the voice of Jesus. I command that devil to be out of your life forever. <laughs> Lift your hands and give him praise. Open our eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah tonight's teaching is is um, really all the teachings that have been coming are preparing us there is a mighty 
there is a series I look forward to starting but all of the series that have been coming on faith and all of these things they are they are preparatory teachings hallelujah I told us that this year I want my goal is that our lives will be so impactful so impactful in every area hallelujah that in this year you will carry the anointing of the spirit in a way you have never carried this year you will carry the wisdom of the spirit that there will be a testament in your life that the rain is falling hallelujah and to do that we must be guided through strategic teachings strategic teachings now teachings are like like paint brushes you are able to the artist before a painting happens on a on the whole board and all of that the artist already has an idea of what he wants but he needs the medium of the brush and the colors and he begins to play out what is in his mind there is there is something in the mind of god for you in 2015 hallelujah and i'm just like an artist walking in partnership with the holy spirit to make sure that the exact picture that is in the mind of our father will be made manifest in our life this year in the name of jesus christ so tonight's teaching is really going to challenge us um, and help us to be better people more effective in every sense in the name of jesus christ my status is changing it's no more decline we're on our way to better days status is changing it's no more decline we're on our way to better days we prophesy that's what is happening to us in the spirit Status is changing, it's no more time, we're on our way. Turn to your neighbor and prophesy, tell him my status is changing. Status is changing, no more time. Listen to me there is nobody who ever won the olympics by mistake are you getting me those illusions do not exist every dimension of success be it spiritual be it financial in every sense is strategic and intentional hallelujah nobody 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 there is no successful person who cannot show you the formula who cannot show you the pathway he followed hallelujah you may not you may not see the full picture right now but brothers and sisters let me tell you it will not take long there is a kind of grace that when you sit under it implicates you it will not take long something will burst open it's like you're blowing a balloon you know how you keep blowing a balloon a time comes it doesn't matter what it is it just cannot take it and i perceive in my spirit that we're getting to that point i've been singing this song it's not a special number sometimes some songs help you articulate seasons 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 hallelujah i sleep with this song i wake up with it is my prayer and i know that there are certain people some mantles have long waited for you you see and and there are there are shoes that many of us will step into you will be amazed 
I hope you know that I'm not a politician. When I stand to speak, I'm not, this is not a manifesto. This is a communication of what the Spirit is saying. There are certain levels of graces that people will step into. Just know this, brothers and sisters. There is no mistake about success at any level. There is no mistake. There is no mistake. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please pray in one minute and say, Lord, no distraction tonight. Give me such an unusual ability to listen. An unusual ability to be focused. Inside and outside. Even if you have to sit on the fence, even if you have to stand, don't worry. Just pay your price now. Only a foolish athlete complains during the times of discipline. Only a failure looks for comfort during the time of training. The Bible says there's no man that worried who will entangle himself with civilian affairs. Humble yourself and submit yourself to the dealings of the Spirit and see how mighty you will become. I don't care what the limitations are. Take your eyes away from them. Hallelujah. Now I want you to sing this song as a prophecy. Sing it to yourself. I'm on my way. Listen. Nobody in your family may have crossed that line before. But as far as you know, God is leading you. There is a path. It says there is a path which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Some of you, as ordinary as you look, just let the word of God finish its course in your life. I'm on my way, on my way, I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way, on my way. No matter what the failure has been, no matter what the limitations are, prophesy, challenge your fears. I'm on my way Listen, listen, let me talk to you The man who wrote this song do you know how the song came about? He was blind. Are you hearing me? He was blind. And one time a doctor looked at him and said, this is your condition. I can do something about it. And he was surprised. You mean my eyes can open? And he began to pray and talk to the Lord. And the Holy Spirit told him the meaning of that is that your status is about to change. Yeah, that's how he wrote the song. He was not just a musician. That so this can change. That once upon a time, everybody looks at you in your family and thinks you are just one of those bunch of failures. But you come up from another route that no man has seen. And you tell them, I may look small now, but there is a hand that is holding me. I may have made all kinds of mistakes in the past. It's easy to judge me by my mistakes of the past, but there is a hand holding me. It's true that Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He didn't die forever. While others were talking about his death, he had already resurrected. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to That the doors that refuse to open to you must open in this season. There's no more decline. Father, in the name of Jesus, take us higher. We are praying this from the depths of our heart. Take every one person from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from grace to grace, from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I'm led to lead you in just one prayer. Say, Lord, make me successful. I don't know if you've ever prayed that prayer. Pray it. Not for your neighbor. Just say it. Make me. Don't say, I want to be successful. That's not a wise prayer. Make me. Please just pray. Whether you understand what I'm saying or not, just follow what we're doing. Take your eyes away from what you are not. Take your eyes. Just say, Lord, make me successful. By every standard. We're on our way, on our way, we're on our way to better days. We're on our way. Hallelujah. 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 Seven years ago, I said this. These were my exact words. I said, We will all be successful. And the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves. Seven years ago. I said this and I have not stopped saying it. This is a revolution. You may not look like it. But let me tell you, don't play games with the Holy Spirit. Once he holds you, he will make a wonder. He turned the lives of ordinary men. Forget about what men are saying about you. My Bible is full of the archives of the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Some of us ladies may be standing here. You look weak. You look like a failure. Forget about it. Just let my God, the one that can pick a man from a dung hill, pick a man from a dung hill. One more time. Say, Lord, make me successful. Against all odds, Kabbalah Kataya. When all is said and done, I will be standing. Some of you have been named like Jabez. That all you've brought to those around you is sorrow. But don't give up. Don't give up. It doesn't take long. In spite of the limitations. I may not know what to do. But I submit myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's get to the business of tonight. The training may be hard today, but you will thank me tomorrow. Believe me. This is, it's not, it's not a way that has just been discovered. It's always been there. But the road has been narrow because very few people care to follow it. See, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what level you are now. It doesn't matter what is wrong. Just pay attention to God. 
give him time and see what he will make out of your life hallelujah tonight i'm teaching really more as a life coach if i would put it that way i want to talk to us about our lives and our destinies and i want to challenge us the focus of my communication tonight is to help us embrace transitions but then um, my talk is to everybody but my challenge mostly is to the men this night because you must be successful this year say amen, amen. so before we start all the gentlemen rise aside from our elders prof please sit down but every gentleman rise don't laugh rise we are not playing games please the teaching has started if you are not sure what you are stand up hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus i will be successful regardless of where i am now regardless of what i do not know now i make up my mind that my world will celebrate me i refuse to fail it's a decision that i've made i refuse to fail i declare that my family my sphere of influence and god will be proud of me god bless you please sit down first corinthians 13 verse 1 Please, everybody write, especially the men. Whether you are standing, even if you are sitting on a tree, get a piece of paper this night and write. You know, I've told us when you come, especially for those of us who are new, please get a good notebook or something. Um, make sure you are writing. One of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life. Please listen carefully, pay attention. The dynamic nature of life. Life is in phases and at certain periods in our lives, we are compelled to experience what we call transitions. Everybody say transitions. Um, in, in biology or primary science, they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects, right? It starts from what? Egg, larva. Some of you got zero. You still will get zero today after many years. From eggs, some of you are saying adults. How can it be that? Hmm? And so we see that there are what? Transitions. And at every stage, the rule is different. Hallelujah. At every stage. Now for us humans, there are phases of transitions. You start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood right and then you get into teenage and from teenage people say young adult I've, I've told you my position in those things i don't believe an adult is anybody who is not a child whether you are young or old is irrelevant adults and from adults it continues like that and at the end of your life you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity so one of the challenges watch this and i truly thank god for giving me this paradigm as a person and giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry what i call a balanced growth my obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of christ right i attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of christ maybe it's because of the apostolic office but i hate an exaggeration of truth and one dimension of life above and beyond the other right so i don't want to raise people who are spiritual tongue-talking people but are broke failures in life and on the other hand i don't want to raise people who will build houses be mighty people and go to hellfire are you getting me i don't want a situation where all the brothers are praying in tongues but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married the father looks at you and says young man 
What is your name? Say, my name is, is Christian. Say, huh? What, what, what difference does that make? What are you here for? He said, I saw a flower. I say, you, a flower. Where? You know? But there are essentials that if we do not address, you see, part of the spirit of leadership, not just being a man of God, leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives. Are you following me now? If I go to a congregation where I'm talking to professionals, there is my approach, my examples, right? And my communications become different. If I'm teaching in a children's class, you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest. You are, you are spoiling those children. You are supposed to be teaching them how to press into God, you know, all of that. And you cannot be talking to... Um, say grand people of 70 80 years and you are talking to them and you know saying certain things so part of leadership and and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics not just the art of teaching but the ability to communicate right we live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked there are many preachers who are, ask, who are answering questions nobody is asking. So, while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the Spirit is doing, we must also be able to transit the body of Christ. The church is an institution, right? An institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies. And part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of Christ become successful and relevant even societally i was saying it in the leaders meeting and i said look my project this year among other things is to trust god that as this rain falls rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time is that true so that rain will fall on us in the name of jesus but then just just prophesying and saying the name of jesus be successful is a mirage you've done it for years nothing happened success is not an impartation there is nowhere in the bible where you impart success you can you can receive impartation of wisdom you can impart all of this but the bible says they are life to those who find them not to those who wish praise the lord are we there 13 verse 11 not 1 11 when i was a child that means when I was at a season of my life called childhood. Are you following me now? Certain things happened in my life at that point. Number one, I did what? My conversations were childish. I spoke like a child. And, and nobody, you don't rebuke a child. If we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say, say something. And he says, I want sweet. You can't flog him. He's speaking as a child. That is the reality within his age range. And it helps us know that the child is correct. If you call a little child and looks at you and says, where is my wife? Automatically, you know he has been watching nonsense. Either house helps or people have, 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 have raped his mind and transited him to realms that he's not supposed to have gotten there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, there are seasons I speak like a child. So, you know a child first by conversation. Second, I understood mindset i had the mentality of a child my understanding was childish some group of um some of my little children in this place they always come to hug me after service so they wrote me a letter they all came together wrote different letters and gave me and I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter. And these children will not let me rest. So today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service. If you write me a letter and I don't reply it, you, you as an adult, you can't come and pin me. I tell you, look, my brother, the reality, but these ones don't care. They wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back. If we tell them now, next week, all of you come here you are going to we are carrying you to where a place where we go and play or even father christmas or father february or father whatever is coming here 
they will come dressed and happy. They don't want to know where you get the money from. They don't care. The cost dimension of life does not apply to them. They don't think cost. They only think reality. You told me you will buy me sweet. Whether you are stealing the money, whether the shop is open or not, where is my sweet? You said you are buying me a car. Where is it? Even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point, he believes that a car is coming. So I understood like a child. Right? Number three, I thought like a child. So those things, are they characterize certain seasons. But then the trouble with many people and especially young people is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same plane. Whether you are prepared or not, sooner or later, transitions begin in our lives. Right? I'll never forget going somewhere and I saw a place that I used to go many years ago. I used to just go there and joke around and play and I said, Jesus Christ, who would have known that that little boy playing around? You see that? See the guys, see some of you touching your face and saying, this is beard, am I joking? When did he, welcome to transition. I remember, I remember when I, when I was in secondary school, I think it was just one or two. There were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so, they were excited about it. We had some people who were very hairy and then all of that, but then these guys, it looked like an insult and you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now, <laughs> you still see people do it, Abby. All these boys, when they say, how far? They just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure it's um, a nice Bab in this and make sure it's the type that will attract the ladies. But now, when you go, you say, are you there? As they are babbing, they say what? Well, just, just keep lowering it. You don't even know what. You don't know what the name of the style you want. Just say start. Start. Whatever it looks like as you proceed, I'll tell you whatever adjustments you make. Some of you even finish babbing and they say cab. Say, cab. What difference does it make? Carving. Transitions. Are you following me now? Now, whether you like it or not, you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is very, very important. Our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures. You can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once. For instance, you can succeed as a child saying foolish things and going scot-free. And then when you transit and forget you have grown, what you said yesterday and people kept quiet, you will say it tomorrow and they will slap you. Is that true? Because a transition has happened. A mistake you made and God kept quiet as if he didn't see it. You make it two years later, you will pay for it dearly. So our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring is what I want to share very briefly. There are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives. Never forget these five areas. Number one is your spiritual life. The first area you must focus your spiritual life. Talks about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your passion about the things of God. Your passion about the house of God. Your passion about spiritual activities. Your, your, your passion to know God and love him more. A season comes in your life. Where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life. It will start messing up your life. Now look at me. Our generation of young people, we thank God for what God is doing right now, but most of our parents did not focus on spiritual growth. What they focused on was academic or intellectual success. Is that true? 
So if I have a master's today, even if I'm drinking beer, I'm okay. Right? So if I come and meet this lady, come. I meet her and I say, I want to marry you. And they say, how is the guy? I say, he's nice. Is he working? Yes. Where? He's working with uh, civil defense. I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but eh, just touches it once in a while. And so, once, listen, that does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink? Eh, once in a while, smoking. I only saw him smoke once. Ah, but it's okay now. It's better than how many people. And then, we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, Andrea, that you must focus on spiritual success. It's, it's a non-negotiable index to measure success and growth. Your relationship with Jesus Christ your understanding of spiritual things i will never never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again and filled with the holy spirit and serious with god with traceable evidences of transformation traceable traceable you, you not you can't you can't say you love god and then we can't see the sign god is not a god is not a herbalist you love God, you've walked with him, there must be a traceable evidence. Number two, finance. Everybody say finance. All the men say finance. Areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success. I don't care how you pray in tongues, pray to the roof and come down. If you do not pay attention to your finance, it may not show now, but as transition happens, you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wealth. Finance defines wealth, abundance, financial freedom. Very important. I was talking to the leaders and I said, Kai, we need to do something about our brothers. Many of them love God, but they are broke. Is not an insult. If we don't do that, other people will come and be carrying our ladies. Because when it's time to marry, God has said, move forward. There is a Red Sea in front of you. Right? The Red Sea. Is, and that Red Sea now is, is, is not Red Sea of demons. You have settled those ones. You left Egypt already. You left Egypt flawlessly. But right now you are standing before a Red Sea. Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to your finances, you will be a failure in life. And I tell you this, I give it to you as a guarantee. Number three, family life. Many people learn family life as they get married. When things go wrong, he looks at the wife and says, what's going on? Say, what's going on? We are messing up. Say, really, what did you learn about family? Say, I didn't learn anything. I only got married. And unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over, the, or they'll hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good. Right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job, good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. Say, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. You've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. 
So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beauty or a handsome guy, I like the guy. What of you? What do you think? Ah, whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in, born again or not born again. Are you seeing now transition? So many other factors that you are not aware of coming. You get married to the man and all of a sudden the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transition. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level. Because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So, I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life. Otherwise, you will be shocked. As a pastor, the way you pastor a church of 12 members, 14 members, is very different. When 50 members come, out of those 50, there's at least four or five wicked people. They are, they've been, your, your, your leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming. That means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them, they are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you right when 100 people come your leadership style and your understanding must change when a crowd comes everything must change same thing when you get a job as a jjc they just gave you a job there is an approach the moment they promote you certain things are expected right as a senior staff there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you are you getting what i'm saying when God began to transit Moses in the anointing, it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment, but compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that. He insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel they rebuke her. He took time to explain. Because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself. And the people God will bring under your care. If you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four. Very quickly. Your career or your professional life. You must pay attention to it. Or generally speaking your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you are a liability in your workplace. You are a liability in your office. You are a liability in your corporation. They will check you out. No matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career the area of your professional life praise the lord and then your assignment generally speaking and the last area is the area of relationships and associations five areas you must pay attention as you transit even in this season what's number one What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations. You can impact people. You can leave a legacy. This is what God wants for us. And my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance. Where we are anointed. We are casting out devils. But then we are tied down financially. 
or we are succeeding financially but we are on our way to hell right or our families and marriages are failing listen any pastor any man of god that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family that's why god can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people because we must sustain the ability to balance it what good is it listen to me if stand up Zoe and Ken, assuming both of them are husband and wife, huh? husband, wife, how will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who tore themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people and you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say, turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader when that happens. Bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you are a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You will be arguing, I want to marry. Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians. And some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify and many other people. Many Christians fail fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong things. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, she get da, 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 da. is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And you say, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. I see what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. Is God speaking to us? And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass Waek? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass Jam? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? 
Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, on our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. Please write very quickly why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Write why the reasons, reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason, there is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you, she says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said, you are living, but it's like you are dead. Number one, and this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around. Be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. lack of mental transition lack of mental transition they are growing older but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons to understand the demands the responsibilities lack of mental transition first corinthians 13 verse 11 said when i was a child spoke like a child understood like a child and he said i thought like a child but then he said something. He said, now that I am a man, what happened? He said, I lay aside. I throw away childish things. So many of us have become men and women, but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old. Is that true? So although you are married, you are finding out that you are a big child. There is a lot of childishness happening. In your office, you are seeing childishness. That inability to transit mentally. To match the transition that is happening in your life. Mindsets. And there are three aspects we'll deal with under mindset. Number one is dependency mentality. Dependency mentality. Oh God is speaking to us. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, the rain will fall on you truly. Dependency mentality. Everyone say it. One more time dependency mentality because although it is scriptural can I have one gentleman come my brother if this guy is my son watch this if this guy is my son I have a scriptural injunction right as a father to take care of him is that true 
to take care of him to make sure that he eats well make sure he loves god and all the responsibilities but as the transition begins to occur in his life this child is now becoming an adult is that true that means that there must be a transition but by the time this gentleman is 30 years 25 years and he's still having a dependency mentality that's why we have so many men they are married but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do because they the transition happened but in their minds they didn't transit are you getting what i'm saying mommy what do i cook for him today he say what did you cook yesterday he say say mom say oh yeah try gary today see that so that inability to stand to an extent brothers and sisters there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents house i'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything mommy prepares a room for him he now carries his wife later on the wife is pregnant she gives birth and they are all here it's a terrible thing it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying so dependency mentality they were giving you pocket money maybe five thousand ten thousand per month and now you graduate and five years after graduation you start frowning at your father he doesn't understand why the bad look has happened because he expected that you would have realized they gave you scholarship you were blowing it buying books buying uh, buying boots buying trainers buying everything after all my father he gave birth to me right and now you are finished and your father says um i think you should be considering moving say moving to where is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me the bible says this and that and that and that shame on many young people because although they are old we are quick to look for women but very slow to transit you see a lady ah i like this lady and where are you what are your plans that transition dependency mentality hallelujah to an extent that you see a young man some of you are looking at me as i'm talking to you now you are in this category you are seated and you get up shamefully very shamefully and you call your old parents from their pension and you say popsy yeah can you transfer something to me? And he says, okay, things are not going on. I says, it's always like that. You're always, and you caught the call, and you are raking, and your mediocre friends are massaging. You say, calm down. Please calm down. Calm down. You know old people with this, their thing. And your mother is crying on phone at home and say, my son, it's not like I don't love you. What is all that? Eh? It's not this and that and that and that. I beg Jare, send me some money. And then they go and borrow money. And as old as you are, they send money. You use 10,000 to buy cake and celebrate 30 years. And it doesn't occur to you that there is a transition. Is God speaking to us tonight? Oh, you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not like me now, but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it. See, let me tell you. The person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. It may challenge you, but it will make you a better person. Some of us, we have this over-dependence on everybody. Your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife, not you. To his wife, not you. Hallelujah. To an extent that there are many people who are, I know people who are working but still want their parents to give them money they are working collecting salary hundred thousand they collect the salary and keep and say mommy how far dependency mentality you become a parasite to everybody there are people who everywhere you go when they see you you are tired you call people they say well, he's not around and he's the person you are looking for who is talking he picks the phone and says please John is not around. He said, ah, are you not John? He said, he's not around. He calls the call because there is a parasite mentality. Right? As a young man, you don't learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time and then you want to remain broke. 
if there's nothing there learn how to cook if you can't cook anything learn rice beans swallow it's a good start it's a good start is god speaking to us please take what i'm saying very seriously because if you don't sooner or later you will see that it will whip you seriously i counsel a lot of people and when couples come their number one problem is the inability as i hear them speak i still see children speaking because there is that it has happened in church but mentally there is that dependency mentality so the man looks at his wife and says mommy she looks at the husband and says daddy and then there is a mommy daddy fight going on because everybody is depending on who why didn't you wake me i need to be at the office by 7 30. why didn't you wake me or oh, guy you are married your mother woke you when you were going to jail one five o'clock that old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes you are married To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates. You never cook. You don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do. Just step into people's rooms. And when they see you coming, they say, lock the door. Lock the door. This parasite is coming. Your life is not supposed to be that way. Hey, hey look, hold on, please. I hope as we are laughing, we are listening. Your life is not supposed to be like that. A parasitic life everybody runs away from you because you have a dependency mentality you never have the opportunity to manage situations you have headache you are running around expecting everybody to say you you see that and and the ugly part is when it happens for men it makes it's okay if it happens for women but a matured man and another matured man oh boy sorry oh you have headache what is that Praise the Lord. The guy is not feeling fine. Who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic? It's not like there's no money. We are used to dependency mentality. Mommy, where are you? Come and take me to the hospital. You are 30 years. Dependency mentality. So that's what happens. When that kind of man gets married, his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities. Dependency. No food at home, eh? So what? No food. That's it now. They sack a man from work. Ten years later, he has not gotten another job. And he doesn't care. He said, what happened? You know the way Nigeria Railway Corporation, that time we were working. Railway? I was working in Nitel. I was working in this. And he's qualified. The CVs are there you hear me this night bless you please mindsets dependency mentality you must get out of it do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody say i am a blessing not a parasite say it i am a blessing not a parasite when you were small when you visit your uncle once you are going there they carry smarties and conflicts and milk and bombita. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I served in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, ah, So they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you. I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I will ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government is not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? 
and then they come and meet they say how far you know we are fellow koinonia people so what they now bring it you copy that dependency mentality is the root of malpractice because you are in the exam hall and you never believe please let's be sincere how many wayek results in nigeria are genuine that the people i'm not condemning are you getting my point how many i i never knew they used to do expo in jam but now there's nothing that doesn't happen all kinds of skills expo here shoes any kind you we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating something is wrong hallelujah dependency mentality so people pair themselves when they are going to write exams please come and sit down if you don't know i help you if i don't know you help me question one you don't know two you don't know three you don't know the bonus you don't know you don't know anything there because a dependency mentality hallelujah there are many people who are angry with their parents right now they may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you but let me tell you if you sit down there is the same way your children will be angry with you and say did you have to marry that's what your child will ask you one day see was it by force then you will flog him because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question the second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure the second mentality on that mindset we are still talking about one let's hurry up is the false comfort false f-a-l-s-e the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure there are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure you know the moment you generalize failure have you seen people who fail and you ask them why they say ah didn't you hear that there was mass failure so they now exit themselves and say no it's not unique to me oh guy you've been earning two hundred thousand after five years you don't have a plot of land say are you are you are you you don't know what is happening in nigeria there is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it are you getting what i'm saying but you've not paid the school fees of two of your children you are a worker you say eh, you know now the way this whole thing is eh, is this just us it's not happening in your office we, we generalize there is a consolation that comes when you tell people especially nigerians that you are not the only one who failed is that true there are many people like that so a man of god is falling sick recurrently instead of him to go back to the world and find out why am i not eating he says look uh, you see we are humans so you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong are you getting what i'm saying is, is god speaking to us so every time you fail you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort rather than settling down to say no no i must have done something wrong what did i do wrong what steps can i make to fire back praise the lord that's the reason why we love witchcraft in africa because it's a general thing so when they come and say your whole family now nah, i'm not of course you know we pray next week is miracle service right there's a place to deal with that but let me tell you it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons stop generalizing failure there is there is what you can know that will exempt you hallelujah say i refuse to generalize failure my bible says when men say there is a casting down what will be your testimony yes see for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure you will never be great there are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level general failure they say you know there's crisis in the north yes it's true that there's crisis in the north but are you not seeing god doing exploits in the midst of it you see when you generalize failure it makes you comfortable because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that i did 
is, is, is something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ah, all of you, your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance. Your own lack of understanding of submission, you just rubbed it in the whole picture. And say we are we are we are all we are all there's no marriage coming, it's like that. This is our family, self. That's why you find out that after prayers, after healing, after deliverance, some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there. The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life. Someone owes you making your success happen someone owes you making your life are you getting my point that that mentality the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car it's my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being. The belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being. is an entitlement mentality. We blame parents for our failures. We blame the government for our failures. We blame a lot of external factors. Every time we are mentioning the things that make us fail, we never talk about ourselves. We never say our contribution to the equation. Hallelujah. Um, Elijah, why did you slap Shay? I slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence. And this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk. I'm watching you. I'm coming for you. You see, we never say, look, I got this wrong. I'm not in a good relationship right now. I've entered 10 relationships. Nothing has worked. Probably there's something. There is my outlook about life. There is my perspective. It's ego stinging to come to a point where you accept. But that is the point of true liberty. Are you getting what I'm saying? I begged my father for car to go and greet her father with it. My father refused my father only gave me the cow wouldn't I be married by now an entitlement mentality I begged my father for jam money he refused to give me though I've not written the jam let me fail but I see if your destiny is in your father's hands please hear me koinonia I'm speaking to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you must quit that that entitlement mentality from today some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones. Insulting them and saying, I'm disappointed. I asked you for 5,000. You cannot even send it. Mommy, this is to let you know. I respect you as my mother, but I'm, I'm disappointed. Send. You are cursing yourself. People return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning. Una no cook. Ah, you didn't bring ingredients. You didn't bring the food. You didn't buy kerosene. You didn't wash the plates. But there is an entitlement mentality. Something in you lies to you. That the whole world is just about you. That's the entitlement mentality. Pastor Jake, I beg, I think get something from you. He said, no, what for? And you're hungry. 
entitlement that's why you see in many churches there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony oh god gave me three million and somebody's waiting for them immediately after the service say well done sir ah your testimony really touched me you see i hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here so you are a pest to everybody around you you are just waiting for people to succeed and then they pay you like it's a right your success depends entirely on you and god never forget that it's god speaking to us i knew this early in life and it has helped me that belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish grow up tonight and get out of that mindset why are you not playing your keyboard very well and eh, nobody bought keyboard for me now who will buy it why have you not risen to that dimension why have you not started the business where will i get the capital everybody i meet is not giving me who was assigned to give you you know the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality it makes you believe everything in the world is all about you you carry your problems and distribute it you just come have you seen people like that they come and meet you the guy talking is wearing trainers of eleven thousand. he's wearing stock jeans of over six thousand dressing well and he's saying um i just came to meet you kai food stuff has finished as if it's what is it's a surprise to you shouldn't it finish are you not using it food stuff has finished and you say um, so how can i help you now say i need like 30 30 will do me look at he's he's seeking help from somebody and he's coming with a childish right entitlement mentality there are some of us who and that's the danger the danger there is when somebody starts helping you it almost becomes like a right have you seen people that came to our homes or our families they were trained parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started have you seen people like that terrible thing you see a man and his wife maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month right very soon they start complaining i've been watching the way madame is putting food for her husband ah what did you expect I noticed the way she puts food for my own husband. You are squatting in somebody's house. Entitlement mentality. My uncle gave me a job in this company. How can I be in this company? My uncle is there. And I'm not one of the directors. My uncle. Uncle Solomon. That grew up in our boys quarters. I cooked for him. So what? So what? you come late they put a circular in in your in your reception decks resume work by 6 30 you come by 10. you've done that for three years they didn't they didn't promote you your uncle has done everything to lift you and you are not cooperating yet entitlement mentality how many people have we hated innocently in life how many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality To an extent, some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother. I refuse that mentality. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's God speaking to us. Some of these things I'm saying, when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow, just let it enter you because it will, it will refine you. And it will make you as gold. Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not. While I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, miracle service. And they were the celebrants. If your birthday is January, come out. And I saw a lot of people smiling. And I said, transition. Transition. Praise the Lord. Whether you are prepared or not, transition is here. 
praise the Lord. My, my sister did something that touched me today. In the afternoon, while I was just meditating, I got an email from my sister. And she sent me, I, I still want to do it. I've been trying to do that on my phone. But it's, I wanted to show all of you, I wanted us to project it here, our old six massacre 2009 crusade crusade photo i really would love us to have that i think we can walk i have it in my email eh? get me a laptop with internet and i'll transfer it yes i want you to see it one day we'll come up we have the video i think we have the video of our 2007 crusade you will see all of us there you see victor the head of department of protocol they all held firewood on their head Hey, oh. that's what the song they were singing and jumping hey why you see us so lean looking like like whatever transitions but here we are today 10 years after now we will look back you will see the pictures of today and you will smile you will tell your daughter that was me say are you hearing that was me i was serving the lord all my life so don't think is this lie that most of our parents lied to us they said they were su president they were the best footballer in their school they were best everything our own has proof you can see it and you can know praise the lord one last mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality we are still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres and I'm, I've just touched on number one medio mentalities, mindsets really mediocre mentality what is a mediocre mentality is the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal it's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet the mindset of an average life the belief, the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven is a mediocre mentality. That mindset of being small. Have you had people like that? Me, all I want, God, just give me one small golf, one, two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children. If we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We are happy. We are a simple, nice family church. We are happy. This guy has been there for the past 10 years. We are there. We are not doing anything. We are not letting anybody know what God. We are happy. We are okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up, and they will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Kingdom advancement, kingdom advancement is tied to one word, influence one word influence without influence there is no kingdom advancement i want you to know that when the church is quiet in a society there is no influence and there is no advancement the church in nigeria is not quiet at all that's why we are involved in everything in this country the church nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world and forget about the errors here and there i tell you the church in nigeria is alive we have a say in everything from the executive government everybody knows in nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot-free influence i've studied revivals i've studied um technological revivals it was all tied to the church are you getting what i'm saying we need men and women of influence get my teaching conquering cosmos there i teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion it's not just sharing tracks influence what is wrong 
if koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members you imagine that we call that influence where one person represents a nation influence influence are you getting what i'm saying please don't ever reject influence in your life because god wants to give it to you it was through influence jesus was able to advance the kingdom the bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver it says in in matthew chapter 5 it says you are the salt of the earth you add value you give meaning to the earth you are not just a tongue talker he calls you the salt of the earth he calls you the light of the world and he says you are a city not like a city not a village you are a city hallelujah i refuse to be small in my life nobody will preach me into being small i rejected it long ago i still reject it koinonia will not be small souls are saved because of the influence destinies are changed because of the influence during the retreat media people told us the targets that they want on facebook and the rest and i told them go for it we are going all the way for it let me tell you this is not a small ministry we are visionary people and we refuse to be small and you will never be part of this vision and be small i will challenge you i will challenge you thank god for where you are but we will not allow you to remain there you must rise because there is coming a renaissance there will be an emergence of people in every area hallelujah it was a mirage in nigeria if one person owned a television station is that true television station i remember that time you own a television station they tell you every kind of thing and god said come on where are those apostles and men and women started rising 2005 the lord revealed to me that there will be 37 christian stations in nigeria and today how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media are you getting what i'm saying all the technological gurus and the rest imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention jesus but imagine that you put it on and and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song whether you like it or not you must buy it hallelujah praise god you must make your presence known is the is the is is the principle of dominion part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory then they will adopt your ideologies then they will embrace your convictions if there are if there are hundred millionaires i'm not talking of one million real millionaires in this place i guarantee you your spheres of influence will I, something happened i think um i went one of our ladies here she's she's technically my account officer with one of the banks and um and uh we're going she had been forcing me to come and collect my card my card had expired and she was forcing me to come and collect the card she said i should get back into banking with them and all of that and then eventually i went she had prepared everything when i got there she was greeting me her superior was just looking at me who is this guy and before i know it i saw one koinonia member coming again and then one other lady coming to greet i said that's right this is the kind of testimony we want to be seen when they came and they were greeted ah the man squared up and said oh, well done sir i told him i said this this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank look at her see that what does that mean promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job the influence of the kingdom i don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to God I want you to know that the more you have results the more your words become powerful results add weight to your words results refuse a mediocre mentality refuse it hallelujah refuse it Pastor Jakes in his place of work, within a short time, when he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting, I smiled. I said, those guys, those guys, come on now. 
physical competence, the anointing, wisdom, grace, everything combined, you can't be small. Shout it, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Please, I'm challenging you. Thank God for the photocopying business, but don't die there. Start small, but I'd like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to? I'd like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead, but last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, three days after his death, they made 120 million dollars at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up. This is why we are teaching these teachings. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Sing one more time. There's an army. There's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way. I tell you. There's an army rising up to break every chain. To break every chain. It is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. John 15, I think from verse 8 when you read down, it says, Herein is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Much fruit, not little fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Look, I'm not talking of some carnal, fleshly wanting to make it in life. I'm talking of lifting with an assignment. Influence that is intentional as a means to an end. It makes your words powerful. You are able to speak. Hallelujah. That's why we must speak into your life. Oh, you will get the oil company job. That devil will not stop you. The, the, no, there are the principles. You will get it. You will be wealthy. You will be blessed. The devil will be alive to see it. I will never raise a poor congregation. Never raise a weak congregation. A weak congregation produces a weak man of God. A weak ministry that has no voice. I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say next. This useless man, part of the noisemakers. No. That when you listen, you say, this is it. I had one word and it changed me. Makala boko superiata. You must embrace the influence of the kingdom. I don't know what you have been taught, but you must change your mind. We have small parents, innocent but small, small families, small everything, small. I got my small degree. I read my thing. I don't even want anything. Let me just get. I got one teaching in one LEA school. I'm okay. Seven thousand is enough. What am I looking for in this life? Stop that. Stop that kind of devilish thinking. Remember, let me always balance this. I'm not talking of this carnal, lustful affinity for the things of the world. I'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention. Right? The exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of God. There was a time Jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and Pharisees. The guys were angry. They say they are not listening to us again. 
Ah, what happened? Look, let me tell you, Koinonia, we are a city. We are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at that's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them, he said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures. My spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason. I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly. So laziness everybody say laziness the second reason why people become failures in life is laziness there is this spirit of laziness that is upon many nigerians upon many young people an inertia a reluctance to move forward inactivity satisfied with their levels closely tied to laziness is the spirit of procrastination i would do it another day oh i will do it is it not savings i will save the money is it i will do it i will do it procrastination is a dangerous spirit pray for your destiny i will pray settle down begin to study in the unique area god has called you man of god study about church growth i will study one day until all your members leave and then you start getting angry at everybody. All these people, are you sure they didn't touch their heart? Go and touch it too, if it's available like that. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many lazy people in Nigeria. And the Bible talks a lot about laziness. The Bible talks about laziness. The moment you are lazy, get set to beg. You have signed an agreement with begging no matter who you are and i have found something with lazy people hate begging they hate begging they feel embarrassed don't worry just bring it bring it bring it i'll do it fast lazy people hate begging hallelujah sorry for the little distraction let's pray pray in tongues while i do this is that all right all right so go ahead and pray pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink it will sink down
ahead and preach. Your word is producing results in my life. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, ah, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job. Action, laziness. I would do it. No. Unfortunately, time does not wait for everybody. And if you want to wait until everything is right, you will never move in your life. The Bible says, he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap. Hallelujah. Laziness. Inaction. Procrastination. That inertia. Refusal to move forward. You are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. He said, eh, no problem. You sit with that money immediately. You sit before you know it. You have spent 200 naira from it. See that? Before you know it, you finish the money. You just sit down there. Let me tell you one way the devil kills people. Sleep. I know God gives sleep, but Satan can also give sleep. Sleep. This sleep. It looks little. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them, if you sleep 8 hours a day when you are 30 years, you've slept for how long? You've slept for 10 years of your life. Exactly. By the time you are 30 years, just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping. You sleep from 8 o'clock. You wake up Round one waking is around four. You just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around. When there is none, you lie down. You wake up around nine. That's the second phase of, of the waking up. It's not like you sleep marathon. You wake up, just browse around, and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep. Before you know it, it's one o'clock. You just yawn and stand up. And you sit down, you are lazy. as guy sleep. You will be poor, guaranteed. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Love not sleep too much. It will rob you of the anointing. I, I don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep. No. No, sir. No, sir. I've been awake today since at about, I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? you lie down and sleep it brings a lot of things forgetfulness you are 30 years you forget about everything somebody says I'm coming he comes and he says why are you here he says, I said I'm coming he says, oh I remember he says, Abba, you are too young for that unnecessary sleep when the night time when you should wake up and study and pray 
some of us people can be gisting they can even lie down your bed and wake up you didn't know that anybody lay down there because you sleep and and the sleep is so deep you wake up and you are frowning ah why did you wake me it's a bad attitude I know you won't like me i will still say it i love you too much to leave you that way especially for the gentleman please love not sleep if you find yourself sleeping around just just imagine money disappearing from your life one two anointing disappearing from your life Wake up. don't you know there is the mystery of the night time look at the prophets in the bible look at men look job said um, i mean the psalmist said in the night time during his time of meditation when things are revealed to him the night time is when great men get insights is the time where men of power travel in the spirit okay it's, it's, it's true that you are tired at least three four or so wake up don't let your body cheat you you need to drag it and say no way I refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life. Who is God speaking to? There are certain people, even five o'clock waking up in the morning, that families used to do, you know that thing they do, five o'clock. You wake up, you carry your Bible, drop on your bed and sleep on it. Somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on, on that deep med. Who are you cheating? Who are you lying to? When you see somebody, please, don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny. I'm not telling you not to sleep. There are times I take out time to rest. But brothers and sisters, if you must be great, there is a price. Please hear me, Koinonia. There is a price. Hallelujah. So laziness, we must walk on it. Laziness. Kill procrastination from your life. There are some things God has told you people to do. God told you to sow a seed. I will do it tomorrow. God told you to get up and read on leadership. I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it immediately. Number three, fear. The reason why many people become failures and become mediocres in life. Fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. But it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory. Please hear what I'm saying and take it seriously. Fear of being seen as a failure. Is that not what is responsible for our fake lives? Right? You go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira. And you wear and say, this shoe, 20,000 naira. Is it your own? No. Because you don't want to fail. People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindset, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? have not served do they take people who have not served did you go did you go you see ba look at me many of us write a lot of prayer requests next week now there will be another one i, I you know i kneel down to pray and i see it some of you is full scam you write it and then you write uh, please turn over that means it has not finished oh, there's still some more but the issue is that do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it you will need to take action you see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? 
fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Don't say I'm a child. Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, one of the top three wealthiest people in the world, he was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life. And he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old. Eight years old. Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children. They say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you, if you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, what are you, what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset but it's poisonous so they tell you don't worry ah, why, why are you rushing and then before you know it you now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders say I refuse fear say it I refuse fear there are two kinds of fear fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all would not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. No, ah! no please. Oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, Madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me that a man is going to come ask your hand in marriage and you'll be gloriously said say me marry a man me men look at my children me men. the woman was saying I said madam I'm a man no please this one that you are talking about men as if it's not every man that everybody blah 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 blah, blah, blah. The woman started crying I said madam God is bringing a good said, okay you know how women talk okay well, let's see fear fear that's what has stopped some of us from being champion. You are used to failing. The day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded, it says a lie. Don't play games with me. Don't you know that the divine life, part of the blessings of the divine life is a life of success. No matter how you have failed in life, hear me, I want you to believe that you can come back alive. Are you hearing me? Say, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. See, there is a there is an let me let me use this slang there is an i don't send mentality you have to give life and give people if you want to make it some of us are too careful what will what will zuera say now what will mom we are too careful that 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 excessive care is not is not care unto faith it's care unto doubt and it will kill you there are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear. What if I capsize in a gutter? You have refused to learn. There are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things. God gave you opportunity to learn so many things. There's tailoring now, professional tailoring. Somebody from UK just came and said, I want to train you. Say, Guy, me, please. I don't want any insult. I've seen the way they insulted my madam. I, I, I don't want headache. You are ready to fail. If you think like that, you are going to fail. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you the spirit of courage. Courage. You have to face life with courage. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Stop giving excuses. And tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. It is a risk to do everything in life. The only guarantee you have is the word of God. 
get up and in the name of Jesus take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinone, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people down. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and say, ah, I'm only in welfare department. Well, let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact ignorance of kingdom principles ignorance this is in my opinion the biggest reason ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written you cannot observe what you do not know he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed. It doesn't mean you are honorable. It says, and Jabez was more honorable. Honor is a law in the spirit. There is what brings honor. You can be rich and not have honor. You can be anointed and not have honor. When honor comes on your life, everybody knows that there is honor upon your life. Hallelujah. Longevity has a principle. Longevity influence has a principle and he said in matthew chapter 13 now i think verse 11 or so if i'm not mistaken he said it has been given unto you say it has been given unto me one more time it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will enjoy dominion it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life. Nobody will just come and bless you for nothing. When during our series, The Mysteries of the Kingdom, I teach on the law of exchange. And I told you nothing goes for nothing. Nothing goes for nothing. There is an exchange that must happen. Hallelujah. Very important. These are some of the reasons why people become failures in life. And part of this is working in our lives, one or two or more, or for some of us, even all of them. We are going to challenge, challenge the gates of failure and say, in this season of the rain, I'm breaking out. No way. I won't remain like that. I won't park where my father parked and become a failure. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of Papa, he leads me. Rise up on your feet and let's begin to pray. Bless the Lord for this word tonight.
these are preparatory teachings for the series that is coming I need to prepare us I don't want to just waste the revelations that God has given me go ahead and prophesy Lord you are leading me day by day I keep rising Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Pick up your notebook. You are going to read all those first prayer point the five areas that you must focus on your spiritual life financial life family life career life relationship lift your voice and begin to prophesy on them one by one and say lord i must excel in every one of these areas go ahead and pray I excel in my spiritual life. Shake it, 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 I'm moving from one level of the anointing to another. One level of grace to the other. My relationship with Jesus is becoming stronger and stronger. I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire. No lukewarmness in my life. No lukewarmness in my life. No religion in my life. Come on, pray. I'm on fire for God. Burning. Burning for the kingdom. Pray for your finances. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be a beggar. I make up my mind that I am a blessing. I am a blessing, not a liability. I am a blessing. I reject poverty. I cause that spirit in my life. Pray. My home is a place of love, a place of blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm an exceptional father, an exceptional husband, an exceptional leader. Pray, an exceptional priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I gave you five reasons or four reasons why people become failures. Look, be sincere as we pray this prayer now. The media is helping us. You're going to see it here. When you see that there is any, any area that applies in your life, through the ministry of prayer, uproot it. There are mindsets that you know must change. Attack them in the place of prayer. Don't feel condemned, but don't keep quiet. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Shake it, take 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 it, take
is a prophetic moment. This is about your destiny. Pray. Pray against the spirit of laziness. I refuse to be lazy. From today, I kill laziness. Procrastination. I cause it for my life. Prompt obedience. Prompt obedience. Pray. Pray against the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse the fear of failure, the fear of the future. The fear of the mockery of men. I refuse it. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto pray kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.